And then next up, the big cock moment of the week. We saw Whiplash in theaters. Dude. Holy fucking cow. Were you rushing or were you dragging? Dude, you, when, you, when you said, we walked out and he was like, the hardest part about watching that in the theaters is trying not to laugh. Dude, it's so fucking funny. <laughs> it's everyone so was fu- dead Like, silent. I forgot how much I took for granted being at home when I watch Whiplash so yeah. I can laugh. Because that movie is fucking hysterical, dude. Dude, I would have to, I'd have to, get, like, I knew something was about to happen, and I would have to, like, hold myself, yeah. like, down. Dude, little, like, sh- like, obviously, there's so many lines Fletcher gives that are so funny. Yeah. There's no fucking Mars bar down there. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck are you looking at? And, um, and, you- like, you give a retard a calculator, he'll try to turn on the TV. Yeah. <laughs> Why'd you give it to Neiman? <laughs> The very beginning, like the fucking very start, when Neiman's playing the drums and he walks in and walks out. Yeah. And he comes back in and he goes, Whoopsie Daisy. Whoopsie Daisy. Forgot my jacket. And he just <laughs> walks back out, like so cheerful. Yeah. After crushing his dreams. <laughs> Dude, fucking. <clears throat> I swear to fucking God, if I see one of these laying around, I will stop being so polite. Get the fuck out of my sight before I demolish you. Yeah. <laughs> He's such an. And then, like. He would uh, he would have these little one on one sessions when he first brought Neiman in. Yeah, and he's being all nice. He's like, uh, "What does he say?" He's like, uh, "You're here for a reason. You believe yeah. that, right?" Say it. <laughs> yes. Well, cool, man. Yeah, just, just have, have fun, man. <laughs> just, just have fun. <laughs> and then he fucking assaults him yeah. in the next fucking scene. Yeah, and it's so funny. Like <clears throat> once you've seen Whiplash, you know what he's doing. Yeah, he, he all he's doing in that scene is gathering information on him. So that he can use against him to push him harder and make him mad. That's all he's doing. It's all a show. But also at the same time, like... First of all, Whiplash is just a fucking masterpiece. And it's such a well-made movie that, like, every time you watch it, a new a scene, like, changes. And um, when the first couple times you watch it, you're like, so is Fletcher an asshole or not? Because... He's an asshole so much of the time, but then you see that scene with him and like this uh, past student mm-hmm. with his daughter, and he's like, "Are you gonna be in you? you will you come play in my band one day?" And you know, just being like super sweet, and uh, and so you can't really get a read on him. Yeah, and then the more you watch it, you're like, "That's who he really is." Like that's like if you talk to him at the store, like that's who Fletcher is. He's a nice guy, but. He and you see it later in the movie with the with the scene at the like jazz club when him and Neiman are like reuniting again, and he's talking about how it's his duty and it's his like job and responsibility to push people farther than they could imagine being pushed because that's how you get the next Charlie Parker, or Miles Davis, or whoever. And he loves music so much that he takes it upon himself to push people that hard because he, yeah. he thinks that's his job and uh, like nothing he's saying is is wrong yeah and talking about how the next charlie parker wouldn't be discouraged yeah so his methods like they may seem harsh to some people but those people aren't ever going to be you know the next great yeah so um so it all really like clears up and and you see how uh, upset he was when his past student killed himself. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, you can watch this movie and not know which Fletcher is, like, who he really is. Like, I could see you could very easily do that. But I do think that there's a few cracks in his character where you get to see, like, what's really going on. And mm-hmm. when he first gets the call about that, and like shoes off Neiman and was like, you know, if you want the part, earn it. Like tries to get him out of there. Like he's very affected by that. But then like he'll go and like lie about the death too. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, that's Ooh. just well, he lied about it just because like it makes him look bad. Yeah, but then it's like, how much did you actually care if you're worried about your own self image? Oh, he didn't have to say anything at all. Like I think he definitely cared. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't lie about the death to like make myself look good if it was something like that really affected me. But like, I do think that 
him and the jazz club was genuine and then him during that was genuine and then him interacting with regular people is genuine i just feel like because even then like he reacts to stuff like when neiman like is doing that incredible slow solo at the end and his um like symbol falls he goes and like runs yeah. over and picks it up and like keeps and after going he it. kills it and then he starts doing more he's like andrew what the fuck are you doing man yeah like the most cool version of like instructor fletcher you've seen the whole movie yeah. but like and genuine it's because worry. he's already gotten what he wanted yeah genuine worry like in his voice like, what are you doing dude yeah like, um and i remember the first or second time i watched whiplash i didn't like fully understand what the ending was like i loved it and it was intense but like i couldn't really figure out like was he just trying to embarrass him because he knows Neiman got him fired? And now it's like the more I've seen it, the more clear it's just become. Like, yeah, what that, the ending that is. happened with me fucking tenfold. Yeah, because I was like, I watched it the first time alone, like no idea what was going on. I watched it, I was like, so the kid plays fucking drums. That mm-hmm. guy's an asshole. Yeah, what do I care? And then like you watch it more, and you're like, oh shit, there's like way more than that going on. Yeah, well, with the ending, like, some people might watch it and and think, like, oh, wow, like, this was all a big trick to, like, embarrass him because he got him fired. And it's like a, you know, fucking gotcha. Mm. But that's not at all what it is. And it's it's all still part of Fletcher's plan to push push Neiman farther than he could have imagine being pushed yeah like that anger that he feels from being betrayed by fletcher and him lying to him and saying that they were just playing whiplash and caravan and then embarrassing him that's what flipped that switch and made him go fucking god mode yeah on the and solo you really see stuff like that throughout the movie too like any time something bad happens <clears throat> to neiman he goes and practices mm-hmm and then every time Fletcher hears the difference, and it's like the very first time he's practicing alone, and he walks out on him, and then he goes into the like the the room where he's playing as the backup for mm-hmm. um, Flannery. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna call him Flannery. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember his name, but um, he's playing as backup to him, and he plays. And then like he leaves, and then like after that. Neiman practices more and then he pulls him into the band Mm. and every time he says he's not doing something well enough or not going that extra mile yeah Neiman goes in there he breaks up with his girlfriend he cuts himself off from society and just does nothing but drum so every time he does something he gets a reaction out of Neiman that's making him better yeah that's reinforcing his point and like I said at the end when he infuriates Neiman so much that he wants to come back on stage and just go God mode on a solo. Like once he does that and then he starts going into the second part, like I said, he goes dude, what the fuck are you doing, man? Like the, the part of Fletcher having to be an asshole had is over. Yeah. Like he did his job and he has accomplished his goal. So now we see normal Fletcher come back. Yeah. And be a normal human. And and you see how amped up he is at, like, what Neiman's doing. Yeah. He's, like... He's fucking, so fucking happy. Yeah. He's Cause he, going nuts. Because he gives a speech earlier in the movie about how he never had his, his uh, Charlie Parker. Yeah. Like, he finds... He thinks that it's his purpose in life to find the next Charlie Parker and that he never did. So, the ending is that happening. Yeah. The ending is him finally pushing someone hard enough to become the next Charlie Parker. Which is kind of... And, like, the fact that <clears throat> Chazelle is able to portray that with no dialogue, like, visually with the shots that he constructed, yeah. and you know, it may take a watch or two to, like, fully be able to follow everything visually, but he's able to, like, that finale has very little words. Yeah. Very occasionally, he'll, he'll uh, Fletcher is like, I know it was you. And, you know, here and there, there's a I couple think after sentences. he says, what are you doing, man? That's, yeah. Or he says, I'll kill you. And that's yeah. the last line spoken. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. He says, I'll kill you. In. I'll kill you in. Yeah. <clears throat> um, It's just, it, it's a perfect movie. 
And um, like perfect to me, obviously, you know, that's that's an opinion. Yeah. But like I really struggled to find a flaw with Whiplash. I think the writing's perfect. I think it's so layered and uh, I love all the like the the bright spot of the movie obviously is Fletcher like Fletcher and Neiman's dynamic is the scenes everyone talks about and you want to see the most yeah but even the smaller scenes with Neiman and his family or him with his dad and uh, the dinner table scene is so fucking good yeah dude. like that's such a well-written scene and what I also like is that um they he didn't make like Neiman too likable like in the dinner scene Neiman was the one being a dick like they when that scene starts you're you're thinking like <clears throat> oh his two brothers or cousins or whoever they are are like football players and they're going to be assholes cuz yeah. he's like he's a nerd and he does music or whatever but like they're like if you watch that scene again and pay attention they don't really say anything mean no, until until he instigates it yeah. and he's like it's D3 yeah like, it's, it's mainly it's the parents three. Like, any time they ask Neiman how he's doing, they kind of cut him off, and they say, you and your drumming, and then they'll list off all these accomplishments, like, that their other, that the other sons have done, that his cousins have done. Like, oh, he, he scored, like, you know, he ran for 200 yards, did this, did this, this. I mean... Like, and you with your drumming. Like, it, it makes they him don't, small. Like, but they don't know uh, how music works. Like, they don't know how, like, what he's doing and, like... They don't know how to equate it. Yeah, but there's like, also football is like, what they know. So they're like, yeah, he scored three touchdowns, and but like, they're also not putting any effort in. And the vibe I get of him, like, kind of talking shit, is that like he's probably used to that. That's, that's kind of the, true. That's kind of the headspace he. The feel I get from him is that that's kind of the headspace he's that he's in. Is but like, they also no one else understands like the level that I'm at. They also mentioned multiple times how Neiman doesn't have any friends. And even before he started like going crazy about drumming mm-hmm. when he started with Fletcher, like it seems like that's a pretty common like thing. common thing is that yeah. he doesn't have friends and that he's kind of just like that. Yeah. And um I, is- I like they could have easily made that scene like his his family or his cousins being mean and treating him like shit because he plays music instead of playing sports, which is like the quote unquote cooler thing yeah. to do. But I like that he didn't really do that. And Neiman was kind of like, I I've seen that scene many, many times and I don't really see much wrong with what the other people were saying. Like no, it was Neiman. Nothing that, was, that warranted the reaction that he gave. It was more so like, they just don't know what, like how to talk about that yeah. with him because they don't I know just, anything about it. Yeah, I just saw those like pieces of like those little like nuggets that yeah. were like nudging him towards that direction. But he does like view himself as as better than them. Yeah, and he makes it like clear whenever he freaks out. But I think that's what that scene is about, and it it it, it isn't <clears throat> like what you would expect with the you know making Neiman an underdog and like making you like him more and want him to succeed because of the way he's treated by his family. And it was more so like the scene was about Neiman feeling like he's better than them. Yeah. Which kind of what I was going to say when you talked about the end of how he finally gets his Charlie Parker, it's kind of, it's actually pretty dark if you think about it. Like that's what it takes Mm -hmm. to get someone that's on that level. Yeah. Is like basically being isolated and like that just being the, sole focus of your life Mm -hmm. and nothing else mattering and going through whatever the fuck you have to go through to get to that point like that's kind of crazy and it's true yeah like the people who are kind of like a psycho by the end of it yeah yeah and you know you can be great at almost anything you want to be great at yeah like if i decided i want to be the best guitar player in the world i can come home every day and play guitar for 10 hours straight and I'll get really fucking good at it. Yeah. But most people don't want to commit that kind of time to something. They want to have a balanced life. Yeah. They want to go to work and then hang out with friends and then watch a movie and then go to the gym. And they want to have like this nice, balanced, enjoyable life. And most people don't want to commit every second of their life to one thing. But if you do, 
you can become great. Like, yeah. that's what, you know, it. the people like Jimi Hendrix, like, he, he did nothing but play guitar to get yeah. that good. And, like, you can do it, but it takes a lot of sacrifice. And watching Whiplash will really, like, you know, reinforce that idea in your head. Yeah, because you like, see, like, what he loses to get there. Yeah, and Whiplash has a similar effect that, like, The Wolf of Wall Street should have. Because, you know, some idiots watch The Wolf of Wall Street and think it's inspiring for some reason. I yeah. don't... I don't that's I'm going like to go opposite. out and rip people off for money now. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make my wife hate me. And I'm going to go drugs. do crypto scams. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, there's some people who think that movie's inspiring <clears throat> when it shouldn't be at all. It should be the opposite of that. Um, but to me, Whiplash is almost like it's almost like a cautionary tale of like everyone romanticizes the idea of becoming like a great or being a, you know, the best at something, but the, what it actually takes to get there isn't very pretty and it's, it can actually be pretty ugly. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, I think that's, I think that's really cool too, because movies can romanticize things a lot. Good grief. Yeah, dude. It's thundering like crazy. It's coming down. Um, they can romanticize like being the best at something. Like sports movies do it all the time. Like Creed yeah. and you know, and that's fine. Like it's nice to have motivational movies like that. But it's always like a, I don't know. I think there should be more movies about failure. Not that Whiplash is about failure at all, but there there's not many movies about people who actually like fail. Normally, someone will fail in, like, the beginning or middle of a movie, and then at the end, they'll accomplish their goal and win and happily ever after. That's why I like Rocky. Yeah, Rocky's a, a good reason, uh, or a good example, but, um, like, that's why I love Little Miss Sunshine so much. Yeah. Because it's a, it's a movie about failure, and failure is something that everyone will experience in life all the time. Mm -hmm. it's such a common thing that people deal with, but there's very little representation of it in movies that don't eventually end up with the character succeeding. Yeah. Like I want more movies of characters where at the end of the movie, they fail and that's okay Yeah. because failure is okay. Yeah. And that's something that I wish more people would um, like really start to go into with movies. Cause it's yeah. like you, I, I like having movies that I lean on like when, in certain moods. Like when I'm sad, I watch this. When I'm happy, I watch this. And uh, there's really not a ton of movies that you can go to t that'll connect with you in terms of like failure yeah. and reaching a point in your life where you've you know you failed at something. But that's kind of a separate topic in terms of Whiplash. But no, you know, that <clears throat> it definitely resonates I, it's, with me. It's kind of related. Because it's a movie about winning, but it's not glorifying it. That's, yeah. It's almost like a negative take on winning. Yeah, I was going to say all the, like, when you think to sports movies and all the training montages, mm -hmm. like, they're all like, fuck yeah, we're training. Yeah. In Whiplash, when he's practicing, it is painful. Yeah. They, there's no cool music. Yeah. He is pouring down sweat. He's bleeding all over the place. And Miles Teller's performance shows like like there's no like happy moments when he's training when yeah. he's practicing. Yeah, they don't. That's true. Like sports montages are always so cool. Yeah. And like yeah, they're working hard. They're sweating. But yeah, it's, you can tell it's never that, like, like they're exhausted, painful or anything. Yeah. Like they're showing up close shots of his blisters on his hands, yeah. like bleeding and him his having fucking coming like off. mental breakdowns where he destroys his drums. Yeah. Sticking his hand in a pitcher of ice, yeah, and the and the uh, pitcher fills up with blood, and that's a good point too. Yeah, it makes practicing look like hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then just the filmmaking of it too. I oh, mean, dude. They're, like yeah. it's so easy to not pay attention to the shots and everything because it's just like you don't want to. Like, you just want to lock in on the story because it's so captivating. But when you pay attention to the shots, too, they're pretty fucking ridiculous. There's one shot where it, like, pans around Fletcher. Like, it starts you looking at his face, and then it pans to where it's behind him. And you see his hand, like, directing 
the class and then you like right next to his hand his hand goes out of focus and then you see neiman in the background yeah and it's like it's a awesome shot yeah, and he it's something so i don't cool even stuff. like i've never <clears throat> even paid attention to because that's just not where my brain goes when i watch whiplash i care about the characters and the story so much that i don't even pay attention to the shots but um there's he, so many great shots yeah. in it too he, yeah he does a lot for <clears throat> like the visual storytelling like even when he's uh running in there from the wreck he switches to like a handheld camera mm-hmm. to make everything feel like crazy yeah it's because he's fucking concussed and like fucked up from being hit by a, yeah. a tractor trailer yeah and still like trying to run to the next place and they do the same thing with uh the first scene where fletcher freaks out on neiman it's a uh, it's like a steady cam when it's going and he's like oh not my tempo it's all right it's all right and they're doing that stuff at steady cam and then once he hurls a chair at his head it's handheld, and yeah. then he and then he rushes over it's to so him, much like, rougher. Feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's in your face. He's really close to Neiman. He's really close to their faces. It mm-hmm. just makes you feel invaded. Yeah, <clears throat> brilliant camera work. Very small things that on first watch you won't even really pick up on, but the more you watch it, and you will watch Whiplash more than once because you'll you'll get a craving because yeah, it's dude. just. It's like crack. Like it's it's an addicting movie. Dude, to your watch. whip's gonna be lashed. Yeah, um, it's fucking perfect. It's a perfect movie. I love La La Land, but like not for a second have I ever thought La La Land was better than Whiplash. No, I do have them both at fives. Yeah, they're both fives. Yeah, but um, it's de- it's a clear like Whiplash for sure. Yeah.